Given that we have an environment that has an optimal temperature and access to clean water, how do we now set up an ecosystem? Well, we would need a food source. And we know that the primary food source in most food chains are producers, or in other words, photosynthesizers. I think you may have figured out what I'm getting at. We need light to kickstart photosynthesis. In the tropic and temperate zones that are closer to the equator, the availability of light is not a major problem because these areas bask in sunlight throughout the year. However, in the tundra and in icy regions of the South Pole, where light is limited in the winter months, very few life forms exist and they have unique adaptations that enable them to survive in the absence of light. In fact, have you ever wondered how many mammals and birds prepare for the winter well in advance? Or how a polar bear knows that it's time to hibernate? Well, these guys, these animals, get clues about the change in seasons to temperature and light. In the poles, when the approaching winter takes away light for prolonged periods of time, mammals respond to the decreasing light by hibernating for the winter. They wake up in summer having rested well and begin their advent in the hunting process. After all, they've essentially fasted for six months. You can bet they're going to be hungry. As we learned in the marine ecosystem, light is an important factor underwater as light usually doesn't penetrate beyond 100 meters. But this is actually a general statement and not completely true for specific colors of the visible spectrum. Some colors of light are able to penetrate water to a greater extent than others. This can be observed remarkably when we study algae. There are three main types of algae that exist underwater. Red, green and brown algae. Of the colors that penetrate water, blue penetrates the most often reaching as low as 300 meters and green and violet reach around 100 meters while red is the poorest. Based on this, what we can deduce about the depth at which each of the algae red, green and brown are found? Well, at the deepest range lies the red algae. Red algae, also known as Rhodophysiae, has a remarkable color of bright red. This is due to the accessory pigment called phycobilin. This pigment is great at intaking blue light. Brown algae or Phyophysiae has a characteristic appearance of brown and yellow. Fucoxanthin is the accessory pigment here that is responsible for it. Fucoxanthin absorbs light primarily in the blue-green to yellow-green part of the visible spectrum, allowing brown algae to grow at deeper depths but still not as deep as the red algae. Green algae or Chlorophysiae has the color of green. Green algae contains chlorophyll which also facilitates photosynthesis just like in land plants. And of course, no points for guessing, but green algae survives at the shallow end and cannot survive in depths below 100 meters. This is actually really cool science. Understanding this phenomenon in algae, in fact, has opened up a flood of information regarding evolution and the importance of light in ecosystems.